Hello everyone, I'm Orhan, I'm 19 years old high schooler and a founder of a medical technology company, eBionics. And uh, we are making the new generation of bionic arms that will have an impact on 4 million people in the world. So some of you may ask, what even are bionic arms? Bionic arms are basically robotic arms that can be used by people with upper limb differences to make their everyday life easier, doing everyday tasks like uh, cooking or grabbing objects or pushing buttons and a lot more. So it's simply an amazing device that helps people use both of the hands. And today I'm here to talk about our journey and why just three teenage geeks from North Macedonia are creating the new era of medical devices. So let's get back to the beginning. When I was 15 years old, I already had six years of experience in robotics, electronics, 3D printing. I already built a 3D printer. So my next project that I wanted to build was a humanoid robot. And a humanoid robot is really what a five-year-old child would think by saying a robot. So it's what a five-year-old child would mean by saying a robot. It has a shape of a human body. It can do things and act like a human being. It doesn't really have any practical application, but it sure looks cool and complicated, right? So I thought that my friends from school would think that I am cool and smart that I've built such a robot. I mean, what a reason to build a whole machine for, but I was 15. So I got the motivation. I got the skills and I started building it. And I started from the robotic arm. And while doing intensive research on different robotic arms, I found out about bionic arms. And uh, bionic arms and robotic arms are pretty similar product. For example, if we divide a bionic arm into two main parts, there is a robotic hand and there is a forearm socket. And in the forearm socket, there are two sensors from the inside that align with the forearm of a, uh, of a person with upper limb differences. And when that person flexes their muscles on the forearm, the sensor detects that flexion and creates a grip with the robotic hand. That's how bionic arms function. But other than the sensors, all of the parts between robotic arms and bionic arms are the same. But one thing didn't add up, the price. Can you guess the price difference? I mean, you'll probably get it wrong because it's just crazy. For example, to build a robotic arm, yeah, to build a robotic arm, it costs around $800. And to buy a bionic arm, it costs $20,000, $20,000. So I was sure that I've made some kind of a mistake that I've missed some part, it costs a lot of money. So I double checked the list of parts. I even triple checked, but no, all the parts were the same. So the conclusion was that uh, it is cheap to build, but expensive to buy. And the price was not the only problem. Availability is also a problem with burning cars because of the reason that no one in developing countries would buy a $20,000 medical device. They're not even selling them there. Burning cars are only available in the most developed countries in the world, and the rest, the rest, 3.2 million people are just ignored. And for example, if you're living in North Macedonia and you're a person with upper limb differences, the easiest way for you to get a bionic arm is to go, for example, in Germany, stay there for a month or two for the fitting process, and pay a half to bill. So I hardly know anyone who can afford that amount of time and money for their medical devices. So I knew that this is a problem I have to tackle. I knew that one day I should solve this problem. But at the time, I only knew how to solder wires and uh, modeling. I didn't know anything about business or creating a whole product. So a few months passed by, and me and my friends went to many hackathons. And we really enjoyed uh, going on hackathons. It's a crazy good experience. So a hackathon is a four-day challenge that has some kind of a problem. And people there uh, are just groups of friends, and they're trying to find a solution for that problem. And they're basically competing on not sleeping for four days and creating a whole product. And on the final day, they present the idea, and they just pass out and sleep for two days. But it's a crazy good experience. And one day, my friend Boris, who is now a co-founder of eBionics, 
came to me and he was like, uh, there is a new challenge organized by UNICEF. It's called Generation Limited. And I was like, yeah, we should go to that. But a few months passed by and we didn't know any detail about it. So one day I was in a class and Boris is my classmate also. I was in a class in some boring class, I think it was history or something like that, and I was bored to death. And Boris was sitting next to me and he is kind of a person who is always focused on what the teacher is saying and he doesn't really want to chit chat in the class. So I knew the only way to make him talk is to ask him something about school or a project. So I asked him, what's going on with that uh, challenge organized by UNICEF? And he said, it's about finding solutions for people with disabilities. And in that moment it clicked. I knew that this is the right time to solve this problem, to solve the problem with burning arms. And I told Boris about it. And Boris was great, but the application deadline is within three hours. So we had just three hours to create a whole team, to create what is now known as eBionics. And Boris is a kind of a guy who knows everything about business and sales and all of that. And later we needed someone to write the code for the bunny arm. So I called Theo. Theo is the one in, uh, in the left. And uh, he is a crazy smart person and went to many international math and informatic Olympiads. So I called him and I was like, do you know what are bunny arms? And he said, no. I explained it to him and I asked him, do you think you can write a code for a bunny arm? And he said, no, but give me two weeks and I can figure it out. I can learn how to do that. And I said, great, you have one week. There is a challenge within a week. <laughs> and we went to the challenge like that, unprepared. And we had four days to start a bunny arm, to design it, to research it, and to create a whole bunny arm. And we did. We created our first proof of concept. Uh, we created our first proof of concept, which is this one. I know two fingers are missing, but I assure you, if we had two more hours, I could finish them, but we didn't. Anyways, it worked, it proved the concept, the judges were impressed, we won the prize, we even were announced as the global winners of Generation Limited, and we won our first $1,000. And it was huge for us at the time, we, we felt like millionaires. And we had $1,000 and five months to find a, a solution for this problem. And we started from the beginning, from the problem itself. Cheap to build, expensive to buy. Or expensive to sell from our side. So we asked the question, what if we don't sell? What if the customers don't buy? What if the customers build a burning current for themselves? So that's what we created. We created an open source bionic arm called the Venus arm. And we created an amazing design, a bunny arm that can, be, uh, that can be built by just 10 parts that are already available on the internet and everyone can find them. And we created a list and instructions so anyone from anywhere across the world can buy those parts and assemble a whole bunny arm within just one hour without any previous experience in robotics or electronics or anything like that. And now I will show you a video of Maya, who is our first user, and she is a friend of ours uh, with upper limb differences, and she re really helped us to test and develop the Venus arm. And this is the first day of her using a bionic arm, using the Venus arm. <laughs> Najmnogo me osvoji to je del od ovoj projekt, što osobeno vnimanje bilo posvetano na cenata da bide niska i se koji da može da si odozvoli ova proteza. Thank you. And after this, we got many messages, donations, and people sending us videos of them using the Venus arm. And it really felt amazing to see the impact that uh, we are creating on people's lives. But after a while, we noticed a problem. We noticed that we have created a problem while solving one. It turned out that people don't really want to build their products, uh, especially if they are burning currents. People want to buy them and to use them. And it was hard for us to admit that uh, we spent six months on the project and we thought that we'll, we can create a solution for the four million people, but the goal from the beginning was to create the biggest impact that we can make and to reach as many people as possible. 
So that's why we went from the beginning. We went to the first step, to the first problem. Cheap to build, expensive to buy. We had to sell and the customers to buy. We wanted to create a solution that is perfect. So we asked the question, what are the customers actually buying where they are buying a bunny car in the traditional way? And we can divide the price into two main parts. They're paying for the product, for the bunny car, and they're paying for the service to get the product. And the product is the cheap part. It's the bunny car and the manufacturing, and that's cheap. But the expensive part, the real money waster, is this, the service to get the bunny car. Because there is the elephant in the room, the fitting process. A fitting process is where medical clinics create a custom forum socket for every single user. And that process lasts for a month, or in some cases two months, is done by medical professionals, and the customer should go through five to six different medical appointments. And all of this is really expensive. And it turned out that, that uh, the customers are mostly paying for the service to get the bionic arm, and not actually for the bionic arm itself, which is a crazy conclusion. So we, ha we had to figure it out how we can create a bionic arm without the service, without the, uh, the fitting process. But we already did. We already created a universal forearm socket for the Venus arm for our previous project. So now our goal is to combine these two, to combine a universal forearm socket with a product that we can sell or anyone can sell. And the goal is to make it online available with this it will be online available, and when we have a product that is online available, it will not require a medical uh, clinic, it will not require a fitting process, it will not require medical professionals and the customer to go through medical appointments, and all of that, and all of that fees and middlemen are just gone. And now, with an online available bionic carm, it, it can be easily made to be worldwide available. We, which means that uh, now the, those 3.2 million people that didn't have access to bunny arms, now they can buy their first bunny arm, which is crazy. For example, a person from Mexico will be able to go online, add three parameters, pick their favorite color of a bunny arm, click buy now, and after a week the bunny arm will be in front of their doors, and they can just practically start to use a bunny arm for one fraction of the cost. And what do I mean by a fraction of the cost? So the cheapest bunny car in a traditional way is $20,000. And the ones that will be built in this way, in this new way of selling bunny carms, so it's 15 times cheaper, 15 times. A bunny car is just 15 times cheaper. And we felt amazing on how we can achieve to get from an idea to a whole solution and a change in an industry with just three years. So we asked the, questions, the question, why are we the first one to do this? Why just three teenage geeks from North Macedonia are doing this impact in the industry? And the answer is because we created the Universal Forum Socket, but the real answer is because no one has bothered to do this before. Because the industry is led by big companies who have lasted for more than a century, and they have already established a huge network of medical clinics all across the world. And that's how they sell their products, their distribution channel. And they have a huge product line of hundreds and hundreds of products, and Bionic Arm is just one of them. So it is not worth for them to change their whole distribution channel just for one product. But it is worth for us as a young, innovative startup. And there is a lack of startups in this industry. It is called the value of death of medtech startups. And these four million people I'm talking here today are just part of the problem. There are millions and millions of people who can afford or don't have access to their specific medical device. And it is our job, it's the job, good morning. <laughs> it's the job of our generation to create the new generation of bunny arms, to create the new generation of medical devices that will be affordable and available for the people. Thank you. <laughs>